As a reminder, the colonists and the British fought together against the French in the French and Indian War. It was an expensive war, so the British started taxing the colonists, which they did not like. Tensions continued to rise and eventually led to fighting. But it was clear things were only going to get worse. So influential leaders from most of the colonies decided to meet to discuss the next steps. One of their first acts was to fund a militia that was battling with British troops in Massachusetts, a militia led by George Washington. On June 17, 1775, the Revolutionary War raged on. In Charlestown, Massachusetts, the colonists fought the British in the Battle of Bunker Hill. The colonists suffered a devastating loss, but still caused some serious damage to the British troops. This gave the colonists the boost of confidence they needed, but they knew they couldn't defeat Britain alone. Maybe the French could help. Remember those guys who lost to the British in the French and Indian War? Psst. We'd love to help you beat those Brits, but we can't as long as you are still part of the British Empire. So the representatives of Congress had a decision to make. On July 4th, 1776 in Philadelphia, Congress signed the Declaration of Independence. The United States of America was born. The 13 colonies became 13 states. While the American colonists waited for help to arrive, the war continued. And later that year, they lost control of New York. General George Washington knew they needed to start winning some battles or else the French would not help them. On Christmas night, he led his fleet across the Delaware River to sneak up on the British allies. They braved the icy river and arrived in Trenton, New Jersey. The next morning, the groggy British allies were taken by surprise to find the town was surrounded. General Washington and his troops returned with a victory. And then, in the fall of 1777, another turning point. During the two battles of Saratoga, the colonial militia lost a lot of men, but found the strength to keep going. And then, on October 17th, they forced 5,000 British troops and their allies to surrender. This was a large-scale victory for the American colonists and proved to the French that these guys were the real deal. These guys are the real deal. We're joining the fight. Now, with the mighty French naval fleet on their side, the Americans battled on until the Battle of Yorktown in 1781. Together, the French and the colonists trapped a large British army on Virginia's Yorktown Peninsula. British General Charles Cornwallis and his troops were greatly outnumbered, so he hid inside a cave while the rest of his British army surrendered to George Washington on October 19, 1781, a historic day for the Americans. And then peace negotiations began in April 1782, and a treaty was drafted by three American representatives, John Jay, John Adams, and Benjamin Franklin. It took almost two years of negotiations until finally, on September 3, 1783, King George signed the Treaty of Paris. This marked the end of the American Revolution. Great Britain officially acknowledged the United States as an independent nation. After an exhausting eight-year war, freedom rang. Americans cheered and finally celebrated their freedom. <laughs>